darling. Do you want to come and see this? This is quite remarkable. My head is full of questions. <laughs> I have a very inquisitive mind, you could say. But seriously, why is it domed here? Just come closer. Domed? Domed. The floor is domed and I'm perplexed as to why. Can you see the spirit level here in my runa? So this is nice and pretty flat, okay? And if I... Oh yeah, it's lifting up at the end. Yeah. And it's pretty big. The angle is pretty big. If I were to just put my spirit level on the angle, it's off the scale. Can you see that? You see the bubble where it was? And then it's sort of on a precipice right here where bing, it suddenly just falls off a cliff and keeps going further and further down the dome to the edge. Oh, seems we have company in our measuring. Every time I get out a tape measure or a ruler, <laughs> Artemis is here to help me. Artie? Oh my goodness, he loves tape measures. He really he does. We spent a fortune on cat toys, mm. doesn't care. Three pound tape measure. Yeah, much better. Yeah. But can I just show you this? Look. So from the point at which it's flat, which we just measured and checked with the spirit level, mm -hmm. if you follow that line to the wall, can Ooh, you see yeah, how big yeah. that dome actually is? Gosh. And can you also see, if you just look at the wall, it's almost like it goes to the line where the damp is. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering whether, because the house was unoccupied for a few decades, and so it wasn't heated, maybe there was a humidity issue, which we know there was. Could that be the cause of the doming in the floor? If anybody knows, I'd love to hear your answers. Sorry, I'm just like having a bit of, you know, a moment. Oh, well, um, welcome everyone to today's episode of the Magical Mother's Mansion. <laughs> <laughs> where we are talking tiles. Some of the tiles are damaged and some of the blue of these tiles has worn away. And I was wondering if I could get some of the blue dye and maybe do a little trial secret area and have a go at restoring. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. This is a perfect example. Can you see the mottled, cracked tile here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and here and here. And some of them, if you just sand them, so actually there were more, but I sanded them and then they looked a lot better. But the problem we have is that this blue colour traditionally was always the most sought after, expensive of all the tile colours. And so they made that layer really thin. So I'm reluctant to sand too much in case I get to the other side of that layer. You don't want to rub it off. No. Yeah. And this is part of a wider project. Follow me. Oh, here's another cat. Oh. Hello. Oh, my goodness, oh. too. I am going to take a tile. This is the one I've mentioned before. It's a unique tile in the Magical Moons Mansion because, as you may recall from a previous episode, in the cupboard under the stairs, I found lots of these hydraulic tiles, which are emblematic of this modernisme style of architecture. And we could match every single tile that we found under the stairs to a room in this very house. And we discovered that they were from this company called Butsems, which is creme de la creme of all these hydraulic tiles, except this one. Where's that from? Well, Rico Marsh. come with me. <laughs> <laughs> we think because the only floor in this house that is not a Butsem's floor is this one. And we think that this was changed in a renovation in the 1950s. And we wonder whether originally it was this. Because this is a Butsem's tile, which you can, you probably can't see it, but very faintly written here is, can you see the M there? In, and there's the S, Butsem's. Wow. I'm gonna see if we can get something similar or identical even to make it up. But do you know what the problem is? No. If you want to make one from scratch, you have to actually make the mold. Oh yeah, because it, so the, the thing goes all the way through. It's not just a painted thing on the top, isn't it? It's actual, this pattern is actual stuff that goes well into the tile. 
as you may know, we are doing an epic special plan for this property, which is where we have to submit to local government and to the government of Catalonia everything that's special about this house and not, and our plans where we want to make changes. And this is probably one of the most sort of exciting areas in terms of developing this building, because as we know, a lot of this isn't original. The wallpaper for sure isn't, and there's enormous damage around the room, as you can see the panelling and the wallpapers. This paper here is hiding some of the panelling issues, the sin hidden behind. So we think that when they installed this wood panelling, probably in around the 1950s, they had a piece of furniture. You can already see the cutout here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? yeah. And so they didn't continue the panelling into this section of wall. And I just felt it wasn't nice for people sitting on this sofa having this behind no. their heads. I love the creatures. Thank you. This is the tall Very trees. Chagall. Yeah. This is the Kit Kemp wallpaper, the tall trees one. So anyway, we are thinking about what we're going to do with this room because we can really let our creative juices flow. <laughs> he doesn't Camilla's know any of this yet. Camilla's ideas. She's an idea factory. I love it. <laughs> I am. Okay, Go on. well, so just going back to the reason why I was looking at the tiles over there, I'm about to visit a tile factory. I'm wondering whether that tile, which I showed you, was originally in that room. In fact, our architect thinks it was. And whether we could reproduce it and put it into that room, because that will become a kitchen. Yeah. The kitchen will open into this room which is why the two are interconnected. Yeah. This bathroom was, because given there are bathrooms outside, three of them, but this was unlikely to be in a bathroom, wasn't it? This was probably yeah. a different room. It was all part yeah. of this big renovation they did in the 1950s. Yeah, so hence we got these, I mean, they're fine. And these are the ones, you remember we polished these in an episode once, but they mm -hmm. are definitely not, you know, as gorgeous as uh, amazing tiles in the rest of the house. Yes. But alongside that, of course, we're thinking so much about what we can do. So we do want to have panelling, which is important because we're trying to maintain the style of the house. But then if you look up here, can you see this moulding in the ceiling? Let me just show people. Yeah. And you can see there's a lot of peeling paint. There are two layers of paint on the ceiling. One was a kind of pinky colour, and then they painted it a kind of apricot brown. And we think that was because where there was a lot of cigarette smoke in the room constantly. It turned the walls, as you can see, brown through cigarette smoke and also the ceiling. So I think, well, it's believed from our restorers, in fact, that it was painted this colour to hide the tobacco stains. Mm -hmm. What we'd like to do is just remove all of the paint and then on these floral acanthus leaves to make them multiple shades of green and to tie it in so much more with the other ceilings in the house, which are all painted in colours, at least in the rooms that have remained decorated from the original paintwork when the house was first built in 1911. And with that, so we'll have panelling here, beautiful floral motifs along the border of the ceiling, and then tall wall panels with lighting and mirrors. So the room will still be divided. I've had a lot of coffee today, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> the room will still be divided. This will be the dining area. This won't be here and this will be a bit more open here. This will be the kind of garden outside inside area here. And in line with that garden theme, I am thinking of a large arched mirror going up the wall, the arch at the top here and one here. Why, you may ask me. So you can admire yourself twice <laughs> in the mirror? No. Well, also what we want to do is have two lights because the room is in two parts. So one light will come down here into the dining room and another one here. So it will be in front of the mirrors. So you will have more light reflecting into the room from that. But also our only real source of light is from this side of the room. So the light will come in and then be reflected from the two mirrors here and here to create a much lighter breezier kind of space and then to have wood panelling around it and wool sconces, wool lighting as well built into the panelling. Now the question is what colour should we use? So I contacted my favourite company for paint in the world and <gasps> incidentally... Obviously we don't allow cats on our table. Oops. 
Incidentally, they also do wallpaper. I have Thinking not opened this yet. The wallpaper I'm considering is to go inside some of the panels, mm. the long vertical elegant panels that I'm trying to engineer. Can I just show you this, for example? This isn't the final product, but just to give you an idea. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> laughing. Cats love oh. boxes. I'm so used to him He's getting into it, that's so cute. So this is that side of the room that I was telling you about over here. Yeah. So you have the doorway here, and then you have the arched mirror here, and then you have panels with kind of some sort of pattern or scenic wallpaper in here, and then lighting somehow bet between. And remember I said about how you'd have a chandelier coming down, which is in front of that mirror and that mirror. Nice. Yeah. One idea is to go with a kind of scenic wallpaper in the panelling. And this is really, really beautiful. Oh, wow. And it would be so nice to have lots of plants in here. So you have kind of plants on your scenic paper, but also real plants. So you connect this fantasy to reality. This is another colourway of that wow. same wallpaper. And the reason, I, I think I prefer this, but the reason I got this colourway, of course, is because Modernisme colours are these lovely pastels, dusty pink, soft greens, then you get blues and sort of other colours tied in, but definitely the pinks and the greens and a bit of blue is very, very typical. So this whole colour scheme fits so nicely with our Modernisme style of house. It's okay. very zen, I like it. Oh. Oh, look at the birds. We've got two of them. That's so nice. So they've shown us close up this bird here. So that's the real size it will be in the actual yeah. wallpaper. Okay, so, oh yeah, okay, of course, yeah. Wow. I mean, it, it's tricky because the scale of this house is really difficult, difficult for you to see on our episodes. These rooms are incredibly large and so although this looks like it might be too big, once you start to place it in situ, do you see what I mean? Yeah. It's suddenly so much smaller. It is so much smaller, yeah. And it's one of the first things that people who come over to the house and visit, who have only ever seen it on the vlog, say. Just placing him down here so I can show you also what's inside my little box of tricks. Of course, when I was talking about the painting of these lovely organic pieces, I'm getting some nice colours in that I can then see if they work alongside the papers as well as potentially on the ceiling and on the panelling. Because do you remember how in a previous episode we spoke a lot about panelling with two tonal colours? Yeah. This is a really good example of it over here and here, actually. And I love the subtlety and texture that that creates. Yeah. And that's something I want to replicate when we do the panelling. And so here you go. You can see we've got two beautiful greens. Sage and Boxington. The other thing that's great about this company is that they will tell you what is in their ingredients. Everything is non-toxic. You know that you're going to have a really good home to live in once the paint's on the walls. And even this, so there's some subtleties, subtle differences. What's that one called? That China, China clay, clay deep and China clay. Mm. And I think although you can't see much difference when they're in the pot, I think when you see them in situ, you probably can see it quite a lot more. A little bit like that subtle difference on the yeah. door that we had over there. These are so lovely. So green stone pale and green stone light. Yeah. Beautiful, aren't they? Yeah, and that's very, very similar to the paint on the door over there. Mm. Almost, it looks exactly the same. So I'm off to Torre. Well, it's called Fabrica, which means a factory, and it's a showroom as well. So I'm really, really excited. So you remember we had that amazing episode, and we should do a link to it, actually, um, from Mesa Bonita, um, showing all the hydraulic tiles, the original ones. And they're called hydraulic, I think, because they're not, they're not put in a kiln either, they're pressed. No. Yeah, uh, so they're it's not an, cooked. You know, very old technique, and they are very special. Unfortunately, I can't come on this outing. Very sad. Um, but, you know, I'll watch it on the vlog, yeah? <laughs> Have fun.
it's just turning one o'clock and my ears have popped on this journey because we're up in the hills so I'm feeling a bit discombobulated but it's such a pretty location this factory out in the vineyards and they very very kindly agreed to stay open a little bit later for me because I realized once I'd looked on my sat nav at how long it was going to take that it was about to close let's see what's inside having so much fun in this place and you can see I'm in a kind of tile heaven. This company, Tora, was established in 1974 and it was a beautiful appearance really for Catalonia because in this region before that, after, well, Butsem's the company that produced our tiles, was one of scores of manufacturers who closed down unfortunately in the time of Franco. And it's really, really lovely to see this art form has been reignited and Torre is one of the key players in that game. I'm going to show you what they have here. What I really love is that they've actually put the whole tile pattern onto a board and in many cases that is critical because actually a pattern can consist of four tiles rather than just one and these really demonstrate that nicely so you can see your central point here and then the four tiles around it and I love this sort of this cataloging for your home the other thing is that they are able to pretty much produce any tile that you want so you can ask them to make the mold and if your floor is more than 20 meters squared then they will incorporate the cost of the trepper that's the mold that they use a special metal mold I'll show in a photograph they incorporate the cost of that mold into the cost of your tile. So it's really, really good value actually, because many of the manufacturers don't have that option. And when you really want something bespoke, then that's really great. Or if you want to have different colors of an existing mold, they'll do that as well. Let me just show you some of the colors that they have got on offer here. Although some of these are quite bold, many of them have got that lovely dusty color to them and it works so well with the modernisme theme that we are trying to continue in the parts of our house that we're renovating. This pink tile here is a new colour and I'm going to take one of those home with me. But I really like the olive green as well and I think that that could work really well in the border of our dining room where the brown tiles have got extreme damage and I think that that will really uplift the whole room and give it a much more green garden outside inside theme which is what we're really trying to create. Some of you will know which architect these iconic tiles belong to. Have you guessed? Yes they are Gaudi and they are the kind of tiles that you can actually see on the pavements outside as you walk around Barcelona. I'm going to show you some other really really beautiful special tiles that they have here these are ones that they've made the mold for other clients and i really love this one it's got a kind of goldish color and they call it a gold brown and i think it is utterly beautiful and what's interesting about this tile is that the colors actually work really well with our house and the color scheme I'm choosing because you've got that kind of pink, the green, we're actually going to put some gold in there and a bit of yellow. So that's really, really exciting for me. And then I want to show you this other really, really cute tile, which has a dragon hidden into its, its design. Very, very playful and happy, this tile. And here is my lovely tile, the mystery tile that I have taken here to the showroom and they have said that they would definitely be able to make the mold for this if I wanted. The only thing I am going to do first however is just have a look because it's quite expensive to think about having it done bespoke and I need to think about the space and the colours that I would use in that tile if we were to recreate it so that it ties in nicely with our dining room as well because it's going to go into the kitchen which will lead directly off the dining room. 
What I also love about these hydraulic tiles is that you've got the geometric designs. Some of them are quite utilitarian and then some of them are really quite maximalist. And they were just telling me that these ones are textured so that you can actually have them in a bathroom. That is a very, very practical idea because these tiles, the smooth tops, when they get wet, they can be pretty slippy. And the other thing I really want to talk about is the borders. Each of the more important rooms in the Magical Monster Mansion have got borders and the borders give the tiles a kind of Persian rug effect. What I love about this hanging array of tiles is that you never quite know what you're going to find as you open up one of the doors. And this one, I really, really adore the border. Definitely going to have to come back here with Ollie and show him geometric you could go with something really psychedelic like this one very very cool and here's another one where you really get to appreciate how the borders are equally important really to the whole impact of your floor absolutely love that it's got a sort of regal feel to it something bold and opulent all in one I'm very, very excited because I have just seen uh, the very iconic rose which we have in the Magical Modernist Mansion. This rose was actually part of the arts and crafts movement in England and it was developed by a man called C.R. Macintosh. Many of you may know who that is. And it also came here to Catalonia as part of the Modernisme movement. So if you were to go to the Plau de la Musica, which Ollie and Stephanie did in their travel vlog, you will have seen these roses adorning the walls everywhere and they're utterly beautiful the way they have this opening bud form. I do love this one a lot. I think it's got a certain elegance and simplicity all in one. Well, I'm totally perplexed and I feel really <laughs> dizzy looking at it, but it looks like our floor in the entrance hall of the Magical Monas Mansion, except as though the floor has been squashed. Yes, how are you feeling as you're looking at that? Mm. I hope you're feeling it too. This one even more crazy. I am loving these designs. They're incredible. Just the way that that looks on camera is intense. Slightly Esher-esque in their look because they've got this sort of 3D element to them. If anyone has ever heard of the baby TV, this is really reminding me of that, where you have circles and to their eyes it's developing, the circles are actually moving. I'm just wondering whether any of you feel that. And what I'm really seeing though is a game of noughts and crosses in this. I love the border, I love the pattern inside. And I think in a different colour scheme, this could work quite well with our dining room floor in the kitchen. I am completely in love with this. This is the one that we saw over there, just this one tile, and here you can see it in its proper four constituent tile parts to create the whole pattern. And I love the border especially, but also the kind of green fronds from within in that central point. You can really almost feel like these lovely strands are just bursting out of the center with these different shades of green exactly what i was talking about us doing do you remember on those floral moldings on the ceiling in the dining room and then you have this lovely interwoven web of leaves working their way around with these pretty pink berries i absolutely adore it and do you remember the dragon that I showed you earlier? Well, this is that very dragon. And look how creative they were. They didn't just face them all the same direction. You can see one is upside down, the other one is looking right, the other one is looking left. 
And this is a different colorway on that tile, I believe, and it is a smaller dimension of the very same tile. I think it's fascinating. And here we have one of their new designs. I think it's very, very pretty. It reminds me of the Zelic style of art in Andalusia, that kind of Moorish influence in the design. You can see it's very beautiful, it's geometric, it has kind of star bursting impact and it is absolutely stunning. your adventure it was really good i saw so many different types of tiles and they've even given me a few samples just ones related to the border of this room would you like to see of course it's been a day of you having like little boxes isn't it look at this okay what do you think about this avant-garde floor oh yeah it's kind of harlequin colors isn't it yeah actually yeah and look at their floor borders I'm going to show you this properly later, but look, aren't they cool? I really love this one. This was one of my favourites in the shop. And if you come over here, you remember we were talking about how damaged the border is and the reason why this floor looks like this is because once upon a time there was a termite problem in the house and they had to actually drill into the floor and inject a chemical to stop the termites and every room in the perimeter has got this which is why this is so critical because if we want to replace those plain tiles on the perimeter then we need to be able to colour match. The other thing is I was wondering about not making the perimeter brown because your eye is instantly drawn to the colour here in the pattern that you have on the perimeter. So to make the key color brown is not my preference. Instead, I was thinking either to pick up on this olivey green or even a sort of salmony color pink, although this is a little bit more yellow. And you've also got this option here. Should we have a little look? So in fact, you can see there is a color ma match of that, but that I'm looking for something softer, more like the green, but unfortunately this green, now I see it in situ, is probably not olivey enough. No. They have got 100 colours there, so we could go back and see if they've got a more olivey green. But this really works in my opinion, what do you think? It doesn't match the colours you can see in here, but it's quite close. And what I really like about it is that I want to, I want to kind of almost encourage and trick the eye into seeing pink in this colour and the, the more terracotta shade of this pink compared to this one I think works really well. I don't know, I'm not sure. Olive have... green then, but the, but the problem I... as well we have is that can you see this is the outer edge and it's already olive green. Yeah. So if we add another green that's going to look a bit strange whereas this is a contrasting colour. Well maybe everyone else can tell us what they think. As you can see it's mind-blowing stuff here. I'm just going to leave Camilla in this corner with her colours. As to whether, if we had that pink border on the floor, would it look good with the wallpaper samples that I received today? Here we have the pink tile with the border. I'm actually really, really interested in this mix because you have this kind of very yellowy, slightly tinge of pink in the floor to a much more kind of yellowy, salmony pink on the tile that I've got the sample of. And then you move into this other range of pinks on this picture and yellows. And I think that the whole thing is almost like a sort of sunset. It ties in really, really beautifully together. And then if we were to look at the other option, hmm, let's see what we think. Well, I like it, but I don't see that gradients of colour through the different shades of pink 
It does still look very nice though from a contrasting point of view. So, hmm, why don't you tell us what you think? Oh, anyway, thank you for watching and see you next time. Thank you.